All right, why don't we um, get started? I know Mika was going to be joining us, but we have a quorum. So I am calling to order the EDC monthly meeting of September 1st. Um, start with additions or deletions to the agenda. We have one addition to the agenda, which is working group updates, which I uh, forgot to add. Are there any other additions or deletions to the agenda? Nope. All right. Seeing that. Oh, Joe is here. Great. Um, seeing uh, none, we can move on. Citizen comments. We have one non EBC member citizen along with Nikki. Do you have any comments to make at the beginning? Yes. Uh, John. Oh, you know, can you bring your chair up just because we won't be normally we yeah, there's a chair right here. You can sit right here. Yeah. Or no, no come closer here because yeah. the mic is pointed to you here. That'll be better. Perfect. Is that good? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Thank you. So good evening. Who is it? Who is it? Yes, he's gonna he's about to introduce himself. Go ahead. My name is Alan Fine. I'm a resident of the village, and I'm speaking on behalf both of village and town residents. Um, I think you know how important pickleball has become to the community and uh, has been very successful at Bale Field with the uh, rec center involvement. Um, we're concerned about what's gonna happen in the winter time when the courts are no longer available. At this point in time, the only courts that I think will be available will be the ones at the, Wis at the Woodstock Athletic Club. And many people can't afford that, can't afford the, uh, the cost of the monthly dues and other costs that the, uh, that the athletic club imposes. And we were wondering, and I'm speaking for people in my club, I'm the chair of the club, uh, whether or not the uh, EDC would consider the possibility of a grant to try and locate a facility such as a school that might have a gymnasium where we could strike pickleball lines and continue playing during the uh, winter months. Okay. Um, so, we have a, a um, we have an annual grant process um, that might be partly in time for this request. Last year we did it in March, which wouldn't particularly be in time, but the year before that we did it in January. We have the ability to make grants not at that time with a two-thirds vote of the EDC. Um, <clears throat> And so the, what I would suggest is that you, one of us, and I'm happy to do it, um, or what anyone else can volunteer, is to just work with you to put forward the, the kind of information that we would want, that we would typically want in the annual process. If you want to put it forward for October or for, you know, for October, let's say, um, I think if you followed the application that we used last March, it would, you know, that would, that was what we expected then. I would think that would be what we would expect now. Um, so I would just suggest you do that. We, we wouldn't, but, but I can, may I just ask you one question if there are any other people who have questions, sure. are you looking for, for the cost of finding a place or, or painting it or paying membership for it or all of the above or? Well, I think it would involve Probably not painting them. My guess is they're going to require striping. I, sorry, I meant striping, whatever your tape, but, uh, and that would be fine. Uh, my concern probably is the larger cost than paying the facility will be paying for insurance. I'm, my guess is they'll require some form of insurance for personal liability in the event of an injury of a, uh, of a player, which could happen. And, okay, so, so, um, all of this advice can be given offline by by whichever EDC member wants to volunteer to work at this. I'll, I'll be the volunteer of last resort if no one does it. But one of the things that we will, I imagine, ask is, will the participants put in some money on their own, or is this 100% funded by the EDC? And obviously, we have. I think a, we're open to, yeah, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is any, I, I, I don't want to take too much time here, but let's just have, if there are a couple of questions and then we can work this offline unless anyone disagrees. Patrick? I, I think the, you, typically too what happens is you guys would do the research and come to us mm -hmm. with everything and then we would then discuss it from there. So just, I wasn't sure whether you were have, wanting us to do the research or no, no you guys would do the no, research. I wasn't expecting that. No, we just were wondering if there might be grant money available. Okay, okay. I see. Perfect. Uh, I, let me try to answer that specific question, which I won't give a yes or no answer to, because I think there isn't a yes or no answer. But I just want to say, are there any other comments or questions that anyone on the EDC would like to make? 
to ask Alan. Nope, no. Okay, so let me just um, put this in the context of the discussions we've had in the last few meetings and actually the discussion that we're having tonight. We have set, we have agreed that the EDC should focus on five priority areas. I'll tell you what those are in a second and big initiatives. This, without going into those details, is neither is neither of those. It doesn't fit into the five. It's housing, expanding housing capacity, expanding childcare capacity, marketing Woodstock, um, uh, re rejuvenating the downtown area, and um, supporting major events. We have also, I said, I think pretty clearly that we want to. I I, I don't want to speak for the whole group because we're discussing tonight whether to also a set aside a modest amount of money about we've talked in the past of a range of about thirty thousand dollars a year for things that are good for economic development good for community development but aren't those five things necessarily and aren't big because we don't want to completely cut off requests like like yours and others similar to it so that's sort of where we stand it would not fit in i don't i think it clearly doesn't fit into our big priorities we're going to discuss tonight whether whether and how and if to establish this other small fund. And, and I think I think we, we will, because I think we've all talked about, I, I, I think we're all in favor of some form of that. Okay. So my advice would be to sort of just check in with us. If you want to check in with me right after, you know, tomorrow sure. and whatever process we talk about for doing these kinds of grants, we you're welcome to be the first person to go through it and okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it Happy goes. To yeah. We do cooperate and we appreciate all that you can do for us and yeah. you know fill out whatever applications right. forms you need and, right. and we would do the research we would try yeah. and locate the facility uh, and figure out the cost we wouldn't expect you to do that right. yeah, any other comments or... comments in the chat i can't oh, i'm sorry um from me to everybody oh sorry. no sorry uh, that was actually me. To each other. no that was me and todd we probably should have been oh, separate sorry. Yeah. Don't, no, don't mind us. Just chatting. All right. Any other no. comments, questions? All right, Al. Thanks. Thank thanks you. for coming forward. Yep. Thank thanks, you. Al. Appreciate you have my you have my email address. I do. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Al. Sorry, I should ask. After, sorry, is is there anyone else who would, would like who's a pickleball player? I'm a tennis player, so I will put my my anti pickleball <laughs> bias aside. Um, if I'm the one to help, is there anyone else who feels like? I want, I want to play pickleball. All I right, Alan, I'll, I'll send the email to me. Yeah, I'll be the comment. Okay. All right. Are there any other community, uh, sorry, citizen comments? No? Hearing none. Okay. Um, approval of the minutes. We had we didn't approve the minutes last time, so we have a, a minutes are posted on the website from the meeting of July twenty first and also August fourth. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes. I'm sorry, Patrick made it right before you. Todd, will you second it? I do. I'll second, second it or someone. I right, Todd has seconded it. All uh, in favor. Uh, sorry, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Minutes are approved. Okay. Working group updates. Um, not every working group may have an update, but I know that several do. And the housing working group has asked to go first. And Jill is going to, I'm oh, sorry, Patrick is going to, and then Jill. Okay. Uh, so the housing group has made progress on the two housing uh, programs uh, so far. Uh, they've got two people set up now, uh, Tisha Buss, uh, who's, they've signed the promissory note uh, and they're on their way. Uh, and Sean and Anna Byrne, uh, their application uh, for funding, we're gonna talk about tonight, uh, but they've now since got the part of the state funding and then they're doing our program as well. Uh, the rental incentive, uh, they received two applications, uh, Hannah Abrams of 1906 South Road uh, and one other application that unfortunately is ineligible because they're in Bridgewater. Uh, but we can see the program has merit. People are, people are looking at it. Uh, Trina has addressed uh, inquiries from potential tenants uh, local firemen, police, elementary school teachers uh, looking for homes in Woodstock uh, to potential landlord inqu uh, inquiries uh, regarding qualified tenant requirements. Uh, the focus uh, for the past month has been to get word out. Uh, they've had articles in the standard, uh, VT Digger, Valley News, and a very exciting uh, 
interview with Trina on uh, WPTZ, NBC5, uh, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Trina's met with uh, Sherry in, at the Thompson Senior Center regarding the home share program, uh, and they'll be promoting it uh, on the website, on the uh, home uh, working group website uh, in future communications. Uh, and then the next application uh, deadline is September 16th. So if anybody knows anybody who might be interested, pass the word around. For that's for the rental incentive. Uh, that's for, for both, right, Jill? Yes, both. For both programs. Uh, so for the rental and the ADU, uh, that's it. And then uh, Jill wants to uh, talk about uh, the Sean, Sean and Ann Byrne ADU. Jill, go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to share screen. Yeah, you're enabled. Okay, so this is the this is the property. Um, it's on West Woodstock Road. And Anna and Sean have a room behind the garage <clears throat> that right now has a, um, a small bathroom and a, a bedroom. They, in order to make it into an ADU, we, they need to make the bathroom, have a shower, and then put a small kitchen area in. Um, that would bring them up to fire and safety inspection code regulations. They have a contractor ready to do the work and they are agreeing, agreeing to rent it to a qualified tenant who meets all of our requirements for local workforce. They're also going to apply to the state program called VHIP, which will provide more money to make this perfectly possible for them to do. Um, I have the application, if you want to see that it's been completely filled out, um, but they, they're approved by the Housing Group Fund Committee who've been through all the rigor of this so that we can ask you to approve this for uh, funding. Do you have any questions? Great. Any questions online or here? Uh, no, Jill, I have one quick question. Is, is this the same state program that Tessa? It is. is it Tessa yes. or Tessa? Tessa. Is that Tessa apply to? Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, so uh, that's sort of interesting. And um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. And it, it suggests possibly, a, you know, a, a more formal linkage at some point in the future. If, if you know, certainly well, a cross, cross referral program, maybe, well, you know. Well, we're creating the interest and then we're making sure everybody knows about the state program. I see. So, so we're the be, ones that are doing it. We're becoming, this, we're becoming the source of information to make right. all these things happen. And, and the state uh, program is actually uh, tougher in the sense than ours and their, their requirements are, are, are longer and, and uh, stronger requirements than we have. Interesting. Okay. Really great. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I think this is terrific. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. It says ten thousand dollars. I didn't catch that part. Ten thousand dollars. So I we need you to make a formal motion to approve the the grant of ten thousand dollars for at Sean and Anna Byrne to create an ADU at three five eight eight West Woodstock Road. Yeah. I think someone I think someone on the EDC technically has to make that motion. So could someone just adopt uh, the words that Jill just said? I adopt I, words that Jill okay. just said. Patrick does. All right, there's a motion. Is there a second? I second, I second it. Matt, I'll, I'll second the motion. Arian <laughs> seconds it. Is there any any discussion, any further discussion? No, all right. All Other than to say, well done. Yeah. 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 All right, all That's in favor? Aye. 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 Great job, any, keep it up. Any opposed? All right, congratulations. Thank That's terrific. Thank congratulations. You. Thank you Great so work, much Jill. for your hard work. Yeah. Oh, great job. Well, team. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's all working out. It's exciting. Could we, could we get a copy, uh, a link to the WPTZ interview so we can post it on the website? Yeah, I, I have. I sent it actually to, to oh. Jill and her team. So I will, I will send, send it, it out of my email and send it to you. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. That's great. Okay. Um, uh, you, there's an, are there any other, uh, Todd, do you want to give a, a quick update on childcare? Yeah. You don't have to, but yeah, no, yeah, I don't, yeah, for sure. Um, we've been, uh, you know, we had the meetings, a lot of folks attended, we had 18 or 20 folks. Um, 
we're all working really hard behind the scenes. There's, it's it's a it's a difficult prospect because it's such a such a heated, livid, live rolling situation. So you know, Larry's got ten email chains. I have ten email chains. Mika has ten email chains, and we're trying to correlate this information. But I can say right now, the survey we put out, we have eighty three current respondents. Um, I'm going to try to really get it to 100 because that sounds cool. Um, but we're really seeing a lot of patterns. Um, I'm going to share it uh, with folks soon. Um, anyone who wants it can ask me and I'm happy to give it to them. It's just not it's not presented in the way that I might present it in an official way. But the data is fascinating. Um, people are there is a, an economic link. It's clear. I think we all knew that was probably the case, um, in my opinion. So I look forward to sharing that with the full EDC. Um, but there's a crisis and we need to do our best to immediately get some of these children um, into some sort of facility so that the family can be alleviated of the stress, uh, mental uh, anguish and anxiety. Um, what I'm seeing is, uh, you know, half a dozen people saying they might move out of town. And I don't think it's lip service. It's interesting. Like I feel I feel their pain and I, I feel like they just coming out of COVID, they just they can't take another thing going south. And it's just, this is another thing. And you're talking about moms and single parents and dads out there that they're just at the breaking point. So I know that we're gonna to continue to work hard and, and thank you to everybody that's, that's working on this together. Um, it is a huge team effort, especially like I said, behind the scenes. Um, and we're gonna to hope to have something uh, to present soon, sooner than later. But um, yeah, we're working really hard. And uh, if we can be half as successful as the housing group just was, uh, we'll have something to smile about. So that's that's the quick update from that. Todd, can I just ask? There's you've given me sort of snippets of information, which is all which I appreciate and it's great. There's one snippet that I thought would be useful to repeat without kind of interrupting your your work, which yeah, is that for. from the survey from the 83 people, it seems like you've you've found two insights. One is that I don't want to get this wrong, but that the the almost entire unmet demand is in one age group. Correct, I, the younger yeah. group of uh, people. So we're talking about people that uh, have a young child, a birth through, uh, Larry, what is it? Through three or up to three? They're not three years old yet. That up up to three. Uh, I think it's up to three years old. Up yeah. to three, it's a, that's the majority of the unmet need. And if you think about that, bringing a new uh, mini person into the world and all that entails, it's incredibly, incredibly taxing but yeah that's that's what the data is showing it's most of the people that are just having the uh the child that are having the the biggest issue and 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 really it's just a real sad situation and the other the other snippet that, that i thought was critical and, and that, by the way i think this was a really important question to factually answer both what is the age group or groups that are that where there's unmet demand and the second is what the size of it is and I think you said something like it's in the range of 20 to 25 people. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 hitting about 20, 20 people. And it's that's it's more than I thought. Um, it's not something I think one facility could absorb. Um, so we're going to really have to continue to work with the providers. Uh, meetings are set up, as you know, um, there's it's come. We're coming at this from a lot of different angles and and we need to do something for these folks. And I, I think we'll find something and uh, and make it happen. But it's certainly not without its challenges. Yeah, a lot of kids. A lot of families. Okay, thank you, and thanks to the group for all of that. I think also, can I just uh, say one thing? There, um, the work on this project has really, for me, I mean, not that this was ever a question; it it has never been a question. But if if you needed empirical data that would show how important it is to also be working on housing, for instance, then I feel like this is pointing directly at that. Um, whether it's for, it's um, in my mind, it's primarily for staff, you know, I mean, it's really, it's hard to find staff members for the child care centers and it's hard for those staff members, uh, staff members to find a place to live. And so I feel like all of these things are directly linked and it just feels really good to know that the EDC is working so hard and that this housing group is working so hard to try and find solutions. And I feel like all of these things coming together will will just bring a lot of relief to a lot of people. So it, it just feels good. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mika. Um, okay, um, uh, marketing. You want to talk about marketing? Yep. Uh, we're, we're well on the way. 
uh, for the September uh, and winter, uh, well, I should say fall and winter uh, workflows uh, and building the rest of the, that part of the system in place. Uh, interestingly, I did a quick little review uh, of July and August of 2021 uh, of website traffic versus 2022. And uh, given the fact that 2021, we had crazy amounts of people here, uh, we're actually getting more traffic uh, to the website because of the program we're doing uh, in 2022 than we are in 2021. So what we're doing is working uh, and it's, it's being quite effective uh, and it's building our, our list to be able to remarket to people. Uh, so I just want everyone to know that, you know, there are definitely positive results that we can look to uh, with what we're doing. So that, that's, that's that part. And then the other part is, uh, and John, did you post this yet? No. Okay, don't yet, because I got to okay. fix one thing. Right. Uh, we, we, the results are looking great. Uh, our, we, we have a 46.2% open rate on emails. That's insane. Yeah, <laughs> that's just crazy. Uh, and our click-through rates, 10.6%, uh, which is also miles above the average. Uh, so everything is working really well. The most popular posts last month uh, were Taste of Woodstock, no surprise there. Uh, and uh, we're getting a lot of uh, really great uh, feedback on the stuff that we're doing. So uh, just that's the, the quick and dirty uh, update on that. And though this, the results thing will be on the, the website uh, after I fix a few things. Uh, so that's we, it. I'm trying to remember at the conference board, but I think we had like open rates of like like 6% or 7%, something yeah, like that. Yeah. I mean, that's, and that wasn't bad. That was, no, that's you know, good. actually probably better than average. Right? Yeah, we're, we're, we're Off crazy. The charts, yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm, one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm going to be creating for next month a whole new uh, uh, analytics page to look at that the, uh, an overview that will be much more clear and a little easier to see than what we've been doing. Uh, so people can see how the results are and be able to track. And I, I want to have it so that it actually tracks uh, previous month to the current month right. so that we can see the progression. Right. Okay, any comments or questions? I have one quick thing that this, I don't think it has to do with the data, which is awesome. But when I go to the EDC website, the counter goes up, even if I just refresh and go back. Yeah, so it, it, but it knows, it knows it's you. It, it knows it, it's me, right? No, yeah. no, 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 no. We're talking about a different website. You're talking about the EDC website. Yeah, the EDC website. Oh, the oh, yeah. goes up. Like okay, I go on there sometimes and hit refresh like nine thousand times so that John feels good. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I'm I'm doing that every yeah, I go on every day. My kids. <laughs> that's how they yeah. get their allowance. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's really good stuff, Patrick. It, good. Um uh I'll just a quick update on the downtown revitalization group has met oh, my grants manager. oh yeah sorry um i'm you know i'm gonna let them come and report next month i thought uh, so uh, you uh, we also have um the grants manager which is not a working group but it is is, is really a, sort of a working group basically it's just not a, it is a working group right? we, okay. we have so we, we have, have, a, we have a group of yeah, four. Yeah, yeah that's true you have a group <laughs> we have a group sorry. yeah uh so uh Allison has has gotten everything up on the website. We are people are starting to uh, apply to the different uh, applications. One for people who are looking for a grant. One for people who have a grant and need help. Uh, Allison is actually away on vacation the last two weeks, but uh, she is following up with everything. There was a great little article. I don't know if anyone caught it in the the standard uh, about the grants manager. It was uh, it was great. If anybody didn't see it. Uh, I saved it and I can send it to you, uh, but we're well on the way uh, of doing this and we've reached out to several different groups, including the housing group uh, for uh, applications and I'll have more to talk about it next uh, meeting when uh, we'll, we'll have a sense of what grants are being sought after and so forth, but also keep an eye on the EDC website, the grants manager page, because we're posting grants that are up there. Uh, and we're also uh, putting grants that are available uh, on the listserv on a regular basis, uh, just to keep it in front of people so they know that this is out there and that they can do it. Uh, and if you guys can spread the word, uh, that would be great too. All right, that's it. Okay, thank you. That's great.
Um, I'm just going to say out loud, sorry, in case you're not monitoring the chat. I think if there are articles that are happening, um, you know, about housing or marketing or grants or whatever, shouldn't those all go up on our EDC website or do they already? They do not. They should. Um, I just made a note uh, to, to, to try to do that. But um, I, I actually think that it's time for us to restructure a little bit the website. We have, I think, now a very clear and coherent set of initiatives around the working groups. The website isn't set up that way. It should be. All the stuff that we have on the site, we can kind of put in a historical section and say, you can refer to it here. But it, the, the website really should be focused on our five main priorities, plus the grants manager and so forth. Um, is there, if, is there anyone who would, who's interested in, in really sort of helping to redesign it? Oh, Patrick. <laughs> but you're doing a lot. Well, I know that you do this, but yeah. is there someone else who wants to work with Patrick? I, I don't, but I'll, I'm happy to like, oh, I, I don't, but I'm happy to, you know, help I'll, I'll, fund it. No, no, I don't think, I don't think there's any funding. It's just a design. It's just a conceptual design, really. If, if, Sam, if Patrick yeah, doesn't have time, we can hire Sam to do it, you know, he's cheap. I, I have, I have my own team, uh, the, e, the TEDx website that's up, yeah. Deborah needed help in, in my group. My yeah, team. If you can do it. That's great. If, if, yeah. Well, yeah, this great. is what I do. So, it's, well, but, but just to be clear, what I'm thinking is at a minimum, it, it'd be nice to make it look differently, but to be honest, I don't think I personally for that function of that site, I don't think it matters. What I think matters is the architecture, basically right. the, yeah. the, what's the org it chart of it. Yeah, the org chart, right. So that people immediately know this is the meeting and this is the working group and this is the videos, and whatever. What is that site done in? Uh, Wix. Wix. Uh, I can I can Wix. I can implement whatever structure you've got basically. Okay. But if the two of you want to work on it, that would be great. Because my my assistant is also uh, a Wix person. Uh, she's an everything person. Oh, right, right, fine. Okay. Wixen? Wix, Squarespace, yeah. uh, you know, a WordPress. Uh, awesome. She, she's my. It's, she's, she's it's my really the artist. navigation. It's yeah. like what, what, how should yeah. it be organized? What should be on the home page? Right. Yeah. Okay. That, I mean, it should look nice too. I'll just say. Yeah, and Patrick will make it look nice. He knows. He knows. Okay, that's fine. There should be a John joke section. <laughs> <laughs> you know, list serve doozies. <laughs> Top ten. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. All right, let me uh, just go back to the agenda. All right, so I thought what we would try to do tonight is to finish up, if we could, uh, I, the, the remaining parts of our, of, of the proposal that I put forward to sort of set priorities and make, you know, which included the big priorities, which we've done. We have to get it approved by the select board or, or at least, um, ratified, I guess, by the select board, because I think we owe that to them. But the other parts of this were a grants manager, you know, a, a, other possible parts were a grant manager, we approved that for one year, uh, a loan fund to businesses, and, and, a, and a process for handling smaller grants, what I was calling the community loan fund. Um, let's talk about these two, whether we want to do them, and if we want to do them, how we want to do them, and see if we can get it resolved so that we can go to the select board and say, okay, you know, we've been, we've, here's how we can, here's how we would describe what the EDC does. We do, if we adopt these, and we may not, but if we adopt these, we would be saying it's pretty straightforward. We, we focus on big initiatives in five areas, boom, 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 boom. We also have a loan fund to support local businesses for anything that would meet these criteria, whatever those are. And we want to support the community through a community loan fund that is of this yeah. size and run this way. Or a I'm sorry, a community, a community uh, grant, okay. sorry, a community grant program that has these characteristics. And we may not have those last two things. We have the, you know, we have what came before that. So let's start with the loan fund. Um, just to quickly share, let me see. I say, John, did you, did you have, uh, have you had a chance to do anything on the research on the loan oh, fund? Yeah, well, so I'm gonna, um, so Larry and I have been working on this. Larry, I, tell me if I'm gonna say this wrong, but I, the easiest thing to show you actually is, is a, munis a Vermont municipality revolving loan fund, <laughs> which is in existence. <laughs> um, 
Oh, so there's a structure that exists we can just jump into. And, and, and we can, right. So this is the Bradford, Vermont revolving loan fund. Hmm. And the web page of it is basically this. Um, included on this web page below this, I didn't want to get too small, are links to the application form and the criteria and so forth. But basically, I'll just read the parts in yellow. The revolving loan fund loans make it, the purpose is to make loans to Bradford based businesses that have the potential to increase employment within the town, to grow Bradford based businesses, and to improve the general welfare of the town using generally accepted principles of sound banking. The RLF shall also provide loans for facade improvements for businesses located in the central business district. So it's pretty close. Um, I personally would take out to improve the general welfare, but. Um, but I'd be okay. I would vote for it even if it was left in. Actually, I might not even take it out. Um, I guess I probably would leave it in because I think things that the smaller things that we get, like the fireworks or something, is probably more improving the general welfare than it is but growing. Fireworks businesses. wouldn't be a loan, right? No, no. Sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I keep I'm mixing up the community. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would probably take out for the loan fund. I would I would use that phrase with the community grant program. Right. I'd be comfortable with that phrase, but I would take it out of the revolving loan fund. I think that there's a benefit to having something that's focused on existing businesses, but one that is also respectful of the fact that I think a majority of people, though not everyone, is opposed to just giving lots of money directly to businesses. And this is kind of trying to thread the needle. Anyway, we, we, I, think, I think what we should discuss tonight, because of the existence of this, and we are... We have not yet gotten legal advice, but we are in contact at least with lawyers who could give us that advice. We haven't, they haven't agreed to do anything yet, but this is an ongoing program right now. So I, I think it's a reasonable, it's not a waste of our time to say, let's assume for tonight it's legal. Do we want to do something? And if so, what do we want to do? Would we want to model it precisely against this? Would we want to adjust it? What's our, what's our feeling about a revolving loan fund? Joe. Um, personally, I think I, I would need, and I'm sure you probably have meandered down this path already, but I, I would need quite a bit more information um, of what, what would be involved with, with, with the whole issue. I mean, it's something that's, I have to give a lot of thought and, and, and I, need, I think I need more things to think about. Um, than what I've seen so far um, in terms, I mean, and, and have, we have already granted, what, $5,000 towards legal advice about uh, establishing a loan fund, have we not? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, we haven't spent that yet. So because we, we yeah, but we are intend, we were until we found this intending to spend that and we may still. So I think we will we will be able to determine we'll be able to determine uh, whether it's legal or not and and how we would have to operate it. Yeah. Bet between well, that, the uh, John, uh, I, I think I think that that that's what I would personally require before I could vote on anything is yeah. you know, more information about how it's set up, um, and and if we want to use. Um, the program that's going on in Bradford find as as a template and as an example of, of uh, how things work regarding the involvement of the fund. Yeah, that'd be good. But I just need to think about more things to think about before I could uh, really even uh, consider uh, voting or commenting on any further. Larry and then Todd. Oh, I was just going to say that uh, as far as the the uh, legal opinion is concerned. We, um, we uh, I contacted uh, Joe Swanson to see if the select board had a um, an idea of who would be appropriate to ask the question because the town does do a lot of uh, ask for a lot of legal opinions and we and uh, um, a a request for an opinion has been issued to the town's attorney Paul Gillis up in Montpelier, but. Um, he has not responded. In, um, what was it about a week ago? I guess. Um, so, so uh, it's not like we're not trying to get legal opinions. John found this Bradford 
thing. And I think a good idea there is to we'll we'll pursue Bradford and find out if they got a legal opinion, and and that might short circuit that problem. But I would I would concur perhaps with what Joe is say, saying is that at some point we need a legal decision, a legal uh, opinion to rely on in case the question ever comes up. And, and how and how did and how it's set up and in looking at Bradford and how they do it and. Uh, how long have they been doing it? I, you know, it, it, do they have you know a track record that can be looked at, and you know uh, we can say, well, that looks good, uh, or not. Um, but yeah, I and mean, I, I, personally, I would need a lot more information to have right now. Todd, I think on a spiritual level, I've been thinking a lot about last year and you know, the money we spend and where it went. Um, and I, I feel good about a lot of it. And some of it I, I have regrets on, to be honest, um, as my personal voting record. But um, I think that this could bridge the gap in where some folks, I think, could get the money they might need, where it might otherwise be uncomfortable for someone like me in a particular situation to vote yes on. It would show me that they have skin in the game in a way that doesn't economically disadvantage them. But um, it also has a feature of repayment, which I think is important for entrepreneurship in general. Um, so I agree with Joe that we need to understand the terms and the conditions and all that. And I know you'll bring that forward, but just on a just on a base approach, I'm really in favor of this because um, some of those things that people have that are okay ideas that I'm not really sure how it fits the mission or you know, if it's really going to advance economic development, you know, you can lean this way, knowing that there was at least some semblance of, of repayment and paying it forward and, and so on and so forth. So that, that's my spiel on this, but I, I'm in favor of it in general. All right. Marion. Yeah. I mean, I have, I have questions and, and maybe they're premature, but just stuff to think about. Um, I'm, I'm also in favor of the idea. Um, the things I'm wondering about are, have we thought about um, you know, how it would be administered or managed and whether that might add a cost that we haven't factored in when we think about, you know, the money sort of just, uh, you know, cycling through. Um, and then also have we thought about whether it's a zero interest or a low interest or, you know, how we're structuring it that way. And then, and then the last question is just, um, I would add to the, um, if you go back to Bradford to ask about, uh, whether they got a legal opinion also, you know, I'm sure you would anyway, but to ask them about, you know, what the experience was like, did a lot of people take advantage of it and, right. and just how, how the, the track record. Yeah. Yeah. History. yeah, yeah. Right. And also pitfalls, you know? Yeah. Uh, other questions or comments? Okay. Touch I, I, I'm as like, like Todd said, I'm, I'm in favor of this as an idea. Uh, and I think if we just flush out what the details are, and if uh, we have a template that we can use with Bradford, that helps, uh, that'll help us, you know, shortchange the amount of work we may, maybe would have had to have done. Right. So I think just let's, let's get the history on Bradford. And if there's a legal opinion to be had, let's, whether it's they have one or if we get one, I think we should move forward. Other comments, Larry? Um, well, yeah, I, you know, I like the concept, I think, of, of making a loan, um, but I think the devil's in the details, and I, uh, um, uh, I really, I'm really concerned about, uh, you know, who who do we say no to? How, why do we say no to somebody who comes in for a business that comes in for a loan? And uh, or put it on the other way, that you know, do, what are the criteria that we're going to use? Uh, and do they differ from the criteria we use for grants? And did, did, would we give these people? a grant and if not uh what where's where's the line there i i'm, I'm not i'm not saying i wouldn't do it i just saying that i think it it's going to take some real good thought and we run i think we run the risk if we jump into it i think we run the risk of of uh some uh, getting some negative impressions because i think a lot of businesses are out there that would would love nothing more than a loan from the edc and i think we need to be up front in uh setting our criteria so that uh, we don't uh, get expectations out there and then uh, find ourselves in a, in a bit of a, of a uh, philosophical pickle because uh, so, you know, yes, let's, it'd be good to have a loan program, 
but I think it, we've got a lot of work to do. Yeah, great. Um, I'll, I'll insert my voice just as the, the sole person that hasn't inserted a voice. Um, uh, although I, I have basically, I agree with everything that everybody has said. The only thing I would add is that I think that the, a loan fund is something that I think the, or I know that the EBC has been talking about for a very, very, very long time. And I've been in favor of it from the beginning. Um, I think that a lot of, uh, as Todd said, a lot of uh, opportunities that we're not 100% sure what to do with, we're not 100% sure that it qualifies for taxpayer grant funds. Um, but we do think it's a good, a good opportunity. It is economic development. We do think that these people deserve a shot, whoever that person is in the moment. And uh, what Larry said, yes, of course, there needs to be, you know, criteria set so that we're not spending money. And I mean, the same way that we do with our grants. I mean, with, yeah, with our grants, right? Like, you have to make sure that it's smart money spent. But thank you. But uh, I do think that it is it is a really important opportunity, actually, for a lot of people to try and, you know, getting a business started is hard, as, as many of you know. And you need as many opportunities for funding as you can possibly get. And so if we can be that stepping stone for somebody, I think it, it would be, we would be remiss not to be. Okay, so, so it sounds like, okay, what I wanted to accomplish tonight has basically what I was hoping to accomplish has just been accomplished, which is if we were going to not support the idea of a loan fund, I wanted to it to come out tonight so that what we didn't do is spend four months answering all the questions that you've all said and then find out that people were opposed to it. And the way they were saying their opposition tonight was, well, I'm not, I, you know, I, I would like to know what the track record is and I would like to know what the interest rates are and so forth. And then we find out that it's doable and that the interest rates are low and they say, well, I, I really don't like the idea. It sounds to me as if that's not what we think. It's just that we have a lot more work to do. We're at the beginning, not near the end. And it's possible that when we find out what the track record is, we find out what the op how, how much it costs to do the operations or, you know, or whatever. We may say, you know what, we all like the idea, but we shouldn't do it. Right. And that's fine. But, but, but we, in principle, would like to do it if it's a workable idea and if there seems to be a track record and to Larry's point, if we can come up with a set of criteria that we're comfortable with. So, okay, that's, I think, a, that's where we stand currently. And then we'll keep working on, on those other issues. So, well, Larry, John, you... let me ask, can I ask, you know, um, moving forward, um, how are we going to, how are we going to move forward? I mean, yep. how are we going to obtain some of the information that all of us would like to see before we uh, decide what we want to do about it? Well, Larry and I somehow have gravitated to this issue. And I think I think the next step, I mean, so Larry and I will, would work on it. If anyone else wants to join us, that would be great. And I would say, I'll, Larry. I'll, I'll hop on on that one. I like that one. Okay. If, you need, if you need help. Just well, I think the next step, I, I would think one thing that I would be excited about doing is just having a meeting with Bradford and just asking them all these questions. I think that's a good idea. I, I don't, do they have anything laid out? Or do they have something that that describes what their history has been, what their track was? Yeah, I'm going to, hold on one second. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, hold on. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I know. Joe, he's going to share the, the website link in in the chat so that you can grab the but I'm also going to actually put it up on the screen because I, I just to show you for one second. So here's the, I mean, if you just search Bradford, Vermont revolving loan fund, but here's the, it's in the chat, but let me just share, let me share the, um, let me share the website. So this is the town of Bradford's municipal website. And oh, sorry, wait a minute. Um, oh yeah, there it is. And, um, and that this is the part you just saw this paragraph up here. The applications go to the town clerk. So I mean, it's clearly part of the municipality, but here's the good part. Here's the loan application for 2022. And they've been doing this since 16. It's about four pages long. It's got when enough- Since when, John? I'm sorry. 2016. Okay. So they presumably have data. They have a track record. I have no idea if it's what it is, but they have one. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, de it's a detailed enough application to give us, to make me think that, they're making decisions based on real information. 
but it's also simple enough application that you know that, that it, it's really um, th that it suggests to me that they you know made some trade-offs between complete you know completeness and and feasibility you know just right. legit you know making it accessibility. making accessibility right okay. so I think that that not only is that front page of the website simple and clear to me but they've got some next level so you know things that so, look so it seems, it seems to me john that we have two steps ahead of us one get a legal opinion and two meet with the people in bradford and uh, and have a discussion with them and i would do the second one first because my guess is that they have had a legal opinion i'm, I'm sure they did sure yeah, yeah that's and, probably right we might be able to piggyback on that if, if for some reason, anyway, we, we will make sure that this, you know, yeah. I, I, there's two things there that either it's legal or the town of Bradford is quite public, publicly and for six years doing something illegal. <laughs> Those are the only two options. The third thing. And, and if, if they're doing it for six years, <laughs> it, it must be, they must be doing something successfully. They must be doing something right. Yeah. All right. The third thing like we have to do is um, we have to download all those forms and uh where okay. Bradford we have to put Woodstock right <laughs> uh, um this may perhaps doesn't need to be said but I would like to know that we are funding people who might otherwise have a hard time getting funding from other people yeah, that's gonna be all part of it I'm sure yeah of course so just saying that out loud yeah, yeah. okay um the second thank you for that feedback I think that's that gives us something to continue on and Joe thank you for um volunteering for that. Um, the, the last piece of the proposed puzzle anyway, for what should the EDC be doing is the community, wasn't there a name for it? Community fund. Maybe it was the community fund. I think we just call it the community fund. Okay. <laughs> and it's, it's your, it's your John, presentation, John. Yeah, right, right. It is my presentation. Um, Unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, we got we got one for the John page. <laughs> why why don't I? Oh, yeah. John's okay. John's track suits clouding his mind. There's really <laughs> not. <laughs> um, I think. Th 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 let me just say by by exception. Does anyone forgetting about how we do it? Because I think is there anyone who thinks we should not set aside a pot of money every year? to a community fund which would make grants whether whoever makes them with us or someone else or whatever or both a pot of money that's modest but enough and we'll, i'll ask you a question in a minute about the number uh to fund things that would meet the broad criteria of economic and community development but are not but are either not big or not in one of our five areas or possible or both is there anyone who's opposed to having those funds used in that way? No. Okay. I'd, I'd, I'd have, I'd have personally, I'd have to have a condition, and the condition would be the the process that um, you suggested, John, uh, a while back about having a separate committee, whether it be totally EDC members or partially EDC members, who would process the grant request and then bring it to us after they uh, process just, it with their with their recommendation. Okay, like so that. you're so you're saying you don't you would only want to do it in some circumstances, is what That's you're saying. Right. But you're not opposed to the money being used that way if we can find a way that you would agree with to, to do it. Yes. Which we may true. not be able to, but but we'll see what the group okay. And let me just before we talk about the how, which I think is the third question, I think it's the one in which we would, you know, there's lots of ideas and I'm not, I don't know that there's any consensus, but I've been, we actually did take a survey of EDC members once, most people answered, but not everyone. The range of answers was 10 to 15%. I, I think almost all of them was were 10 or 15%. It was 30,000, I think it was 30,000. Well, I've used the number 30,000 because that's 10%. And I wanted to make that's it a little That's what we said. It was 30,000. We also. Yeah, that's uh, exactly all right. So we've agreed. The number okay. I remember. All right. Fine. Fine. So is there anyone who disagrees, who thinks that the number should be significantly different from 30,000? Could I just Marianne? ask a question? Yeah. Do we have any idea based on the grants we gave last year 
roughly how much went to the kinds of things that well, would, I mean, is that about 30,000, do we know? Well, well, okay, if if what we want to do are these five areas and big, right? then two thirds of our money went to these kinds of things because the only thing that we had was big was we, the marketing. Purpose. But we had some, I mean, like we did give significant amount to some of the events which probably wouldn't fall under this so i'm thinking the kinds of things we talked about like fireworks and okay well, flower pops yeah, fireworks and fireworks. Be even though yeah. i wish they did well okay i i, I want to I, I just want to clarify something to answer your question yeah if there are two buckets the big the priorities and everything else the priorities are not I th we have agreed, although it's hard to do, that the priorities are two dimensional. The first dimension is what are they? And the second dimension is how big are they? Right. We gave one big grant, what I would consider to be one big grant last year for $100,000. The other $200,000 we granted, by my definition, were all small, right. which means they fall into this category. Yeah. Now, what the second biggest grant, was, sorry, That's the second right. biggest grant we gave was for $39,000 to Vail Field. Yeah. And 20 to TEDx. And 25 to TEDx. Yeah. I think those are smallish, but anyway, so that so 100,000, 40,000, maybe 25,000. So way more than 30,000 were to things that weren't those five right. and big. And big. Well, I would disagree with you there because I think okay. TEDx fits into the. Correct. So, so well, half. Marketing. Yeah, take TEDx out. Fine. So half. So 100. 40 and 165 out of 303. So uh, more than 30,000, well, well more than 30,000 went to small, either things that were not the five or small. Yeah. Jeremy, I asked a question at this yeah. point. Go ahead. Um, it escapes me, you know, because I, I, I don't have the kind of memory that can remember every single grant that we, we granted last year, but- what, None of us is, do, Joe. Is it, is it, is it possible? that some of those could have fallen into one of the three categories? Yes. You yeah. mean one, of the, one five. of the five categories? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I think a number of them fell into the five categories. They just weren't big. My point right. is- right. Yeah, right. They weren't big, but they would have fallen into that category, correct? Right, right. Yeah. right. I'm, I'm trying to hold our feet to the fire. Yeah. It may not be possible and we may not want to, but and maybe we shouldn't, but- John, can I interject for a second? Yeah, go ahead, Todd. Yeah. I, just, I think I think just to focus here on what what we're saying, Marion makes I'm I'm with you. It's, a, it's hard to differentiate. I I can't really go back and say what I would have done differently if this was available. I only know that I would have done things differently if that makes sense for me. But what these are going to be for is my understanding is that things that don't fit into our big priorities that we think are great ideas, but that aren't aren't filling the grant bucket, even for the grants that we might give in the small community section like fireworks. So fireworks is a great example. You know how I feel about fireworks. They're not borrowing money from us for fireworks. We're gonna have to give them the money. We're not talking about the loans anymore. We're in the- Yeah, yeah, no. he's talking about grants. Oh, I'm, coming, I thought he was talking talking about, I'm okay. going back and forth, to, sorry. Okay. I'm going back and forth to grants and loans. So, so to differentiate, I think that the, the, the loan fund versus the grants, I think the $30,000 was, for other stuff. So whatever we want to put that other stuff in, I think is up for a great debate. I And so is the number, of course. I could go north, I could go south. But I think that we had talked about $30,000 being things that aren't in the big priority, big requests bucket. If and, I also, and I also, you're right, Todd, I agree with that. But And, and I also, if I remember correctly, these grant applications would be out of the normal time frame that we would grant the big ones. You know what not, I'm saying? Not you know, necessarily. Somebody would come in in the middle of April and say, I want $5,000, but da, 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 instead of going through the process. Yeah. And, they and they could be, but they don't have to be, right? Is that, is that how we said it? I, mean, yeah. I, I, think, we, we, I think it was like something that popped up that we thought was worth looking at you know, in April, we haven't decided. We haven't. That was I proposed some some aspects that. of how we should do that, but we decided yeah. on none of it. Right. Right. So it's not. It's it. It, I, it could be that. It could be anything we define. But before we, 
But to answer Marion's question, I think you're trying to ask how much of a change would there be Huge. if we had this structure? The answer is enormous. Yeah. Huge. And the, the, the establishing a, a community fund, no matter what the timing is or who the group is that approves it, and setting a dollar value of anything close to 30,000 is going to have the following major effect. The main thing it's going to do is it's going to say to the working groups, if you don't come up with big proposals, the EDC is going to be doing nothing. Right. That's not technically true. We'll be doing a tiny little set of grants, one tenth of what we have been giving. To me, the biggest benefit of the community fund is to force the working groups to do something that will make a difference. <laughs> it may be the housing working group saying, we've got the ADU thing, we want $400,000 to create 40 units, and we want $100,000 a year for the next. And it's Patrick basically saying, we, we want this 150,000, we want to increase it to 150, and we want it for three years. And it's TEDx saying, okay, next year we're going to do this, it's going to be on NBC, and we need a quarter of a million dollars of funding. And, and, it, and creating this community loan fund, no matter how it is, as long as it's in the range of 30, it might be 50, it might be 28, and we might do it, it might be in April, as Joe said, or it might be annual. If we do that, we're, we're doing that as the last step in the discipline of saying, we now have to really work on big things. Because <laughs> otherwise the community is gonna say, what are you doing with your money? Yeah, we can't rip the rug out right away in one false sweep. We have to be respectful of the things that people have done in the past, respectful of people who are still coming and really need these small grants, even if it's not something that we wanna be doing, we need to, we need to no, I, the system. I even think for 10, by the way, while this is happening, the money that we're getting is going up. I just, yeah. we just, we just got our August number. We were in, in 2019, we, we had 300,000 of revenue. That was the last full normal year, 298,000. We were forecasting this year in 2022 to be at 350. We're now forecasting 365. We're 22% ahead of 2019 year to date with wow. three payments out of four in. And, and the third one is tw was 22% ahead. So we've stabilized at about 22%. That, that would, so 360. So, and if you remember, maybe prior to many of you being on the EDC, but the main complaint in the first three or four years at the EDC was you're not spending your money. Right. Right. And so we started spending our money, which is good, but we and we've been spending it on. So that was a, so now we're spending our money, but we're spending it on a range of things that are small. And now the next era of development is we're going to still spend our money, hopefully, but we wanted to do it on a more focused set of things and big. If we establish this community fund again, however, it's managed, we're going to really need to. Have big proposals and do them and. You know, my instinct, by the way, is that we're not really going to be ready to do that in January, mm -hmm. that in January, we're going to have one big proposal that's really well developed and so forth, because they've been working on it for a year, which is the marketing group. I think I don't know if the housing group will be ready to do that. I think that what some people are expecting, and I'm included in that is let's buy a piece of property and give it to a developer and build 25 units of housing. And I know we won't be ready to do that if that's the right thing to do. So I hope for that one you would vote for that one. I, absolutely. Yeah, right. I agree. There's a lot of people who think we should be doing that, but we won't be doing that in January is my point. So mm -hmm. we've got to take all of this into account. Um, anyway, uh, just, just well, other you know, thoughts, I, I, Patrick? I, I, I think the way to look at this is, let's assume we're going to do big things, you know, and, yeah. and, and whether that's forcing the groups to do it or not, you know, I can guarantee you that the market right. group will, you know, <laughs> And, and I'm sure the housing group is going to get close. I mean, because they're working hard. Uh, and, and, you know, and maybe, maybe we look at this as maybe the first year, whatever the number is, and I'm going to use numbers for effect, you know, maybe we, instead of 30,000, we make it 75,000, you know, and then the next year it's 50,000. And then the next year it's 25 and we leave it at that. So we kind of wean people off. Because, you know, if you look at the stuff that we granted last year, uh, it, it, a lot of it we didn't need to. And I think a lot of it we granted because people are expecting us to have the money for them instead of doing the work themselves to get the money they need. Uh, you know, and, and so I think there's, 
uh, this will be a good thing because it'll be training everybody to do what they should be doing hmm. instead of just us being this pot of money that they can go and say, oh, we want to do this. Let's go. Let's go to the ADC. They'll give us money. You know, and I think that's been the problem. So that's why I think you're taking the big approach right. is is what's so good, because now we're going to be doing big things to make big change. Uh, but we have, may have to weed them off, you know, and until and that's maybe a function of while we wait for big proposals. Other comments? Just that I like that idea to titrate down. I like the idea of, of going a little bit higher and then slowly year over year. Going we need a, a three-year transition. Yeah. yeah. I, also, I also think that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, I do. And, and that'll give the big group, the, the, the big working groups, time to put together yeah. big ideas. Look, guys, I'm coming for you for $60 million for a new high school, all right? It's going to be great. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> That's four years we're booked. <laughs> I want to say that I, just as one voice that has been loud, I think, I feel, and I mean, that's a bad thing, but loud and consistent about not liking the small grants. If we don't do the big grants, I would like strongly support the small ones because what we're doing, every single grant we've made, I think, even ones that I wasn't all that enthusiastic about, every single one I think has helped with stuff. Yeah, and, yeah absolutely. And, no, I have and, no doubt about it. Right, yeah. And this money is, for the most part, not being paid by Woodstock. It's being paid by visitors, and it clearly has no effect on the visitors coming. So, the, yes, while, yes, this process will put pressure on people who just think of us as a pot of money, and the purpose of this is not to convince them that we're not a pot of money. The purpose of this is for us to do big things. Yes. Right? Yeah. And so we, we have an obligation to do that. Now, tonight is the first meeting that I can remember where basically everything that we've done in the last month has been done by subgroups of people, yeah. which is fantastic. It, it's real. I'm not saying that there has been no work done by subgroups of people in the past, but tonight, everything that was done in five different areas was done by subgroups of people who are working on working groups and so forth. This is fantastic. Mm -hmm. The next stage of this is to get even more serious about that and, and to say that our task is, is to get to these big proposals. And I don't think we'll get to it by January. I think the transition addresses that. And actually, to be honest, I would make the transition bigger than what you said. I would do 100,000 in January. 100,000 for what, John? For, for, for I, would, I would have a grant process. I would have a grant process for $100,000 for $100, of grants that met our general economic and community development guidelines. The same guidelines we used in, in March of this year, the same process, the same guidelines. So you're saying instead of, instead of 30,000, you'd be in favor of 100? In year one, this year. Okay. With, with, with the idea of weaning it down, Joe. To, to 30 or 40, or 40, to 30 to 50 in year three. Right because, now, weaning it down, what do you mean by that? Year, year one, we do 100,000 for the community fund. You know, then the next year we maybe do sixty thousand. Why would we do that? Because the idea then is that point the the big working groups for the five priorities will come up with their big proposals, and they, uh, and they don't need the money. Yeah, and they don't need the money exactly. Uh, and and then in year three we might make it thirty thousand. You know, and again with the idea that the big working groups and and, and that may happen because I can tell you right now for the marketing group we're going to put together a, a three year proposal. Right. That we're gonna say we want X amount of money per year for the next three years, uh, and, and I think that's the whole idea of right. what John's thinking. The the housing group will do that. The the child care group will do that. You know, and and so when we get to a point, you know, we'll have a small pot of money for the community fund. But until we do that, we're gonna have money sitting there that we might as well use. And, and people will be upset. Right? <laughs> I think rightly so that we're not spending our money. And, right. And I would I I would respectfully suggest that um, I would give John's ideas some second thoughts. I mean, if, if, if we start off with 100,000, some people might get disappointed the second year on think there's gonna be money available. I, I would say, in my opinion, let's keep it low 
like 30, 35,000. And that 70 or 65,000, we can tuck aside for the bigger project in year two or three or whatever. I, I don't, if, it's it's, the way I think about it, I wouldn't start off big and start chopping it down. It would, it would I think, disappoint some people. I mean, we, here we are, yeah. the first year doling out $100,000, second year, people come in with just, with just as uh, a good of idea or, 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 or need for it, but no, well, we're gonna save it and put it over there thinking that it's gonna be available because it was available the year before. But, I, but, I, but I, that, Joe, that's, that's, gonna, that's, gonna, that's gonna happen anyway, Joe, because if we, I think, if, if I we think, cut it, if we wait, cut Todd, it, hold on a second, Patrick, because you were saying Todd first and then Patrick. I, okay, Todd. I think. I think, you know, Joe, it's interesting. I was thinking about this earlier because John said percentage and I'm like, oh, we said 30. And maybe the way to, that helped you and I remember the conversation. Yeah. Right? But maybe a percentage of a max delta of what the funding availability is yeah. might be a better way because yeah, that's the number that changes. And saying 30 when we might have 360, yeah, maybe right. we find a percentage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And well, then right. like, Let's say let's keep in mind though this, this, what this is for is these unexpected pop-ups. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and you know, I mean I'm thinking yeah. a range. I'm thinking a range of a percentage that's yeah. the mid-road's 30, but if we don't get yeah. good proposals, we're not putting ourselves in a box where we're saying yeah. that we're not exactly. willing to do it. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I think gotcha. uh, you you're saying the same thing. I mean, whether you do it as a percentage or you do it as a dollar value. You know, the, the, the real question is, do we cut them off at the knees on the first year? So next year, it's 10% or 30% or whatever the number is, and then that's what it always is. Or do we say next year it's going to be $100,000, the second year it's going to be sixty, the last year it's going to be the 10% or whatever the, you know, 30000 and and you're weaning them off, but you're letting them know you're doing that. I mean, it's not like we're going to, we're not going to say, hey, this is what's happening. I mean, we're probably the most uh out there yeah transparent yeah, I'm, 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 i just I'm think not, i just think procedurally procedurally i think using the percentage as a number that can be variable based on the receipts might be just better uh felt with the public than just putting a fixed number i think that's a good that's point what I mean. but, but yeah. st staying with joe's point just uh, sorry and then larry uh, staying with joe's point for one second about them expecting things I, we've we've had two years in a row where people expect that we're going to give three hundred thousand dollars because that's what we've given exactly 300,000 two years ago. And so I think actually 370 uh, in 20 prior to COVID, I think, and then 300 this, pa this past January. So what, what I'm, what the idea of moving. So I think going from 300 to 30, Joe, is, is, is tra if, if we're completely transparent about it, I think that would be more upsetting than saying, look, we're heading towards 10%, which is 30 or 35 or 40. We're heading towards 10%, but because, and the reason is because we want to put money in years two and three and four. We want to save money for big proposals. They're not there yet, but we're expecting them to come in the coming year. Yeah, right. Joe, but I think, I think you're forgetting that, you know, a lot of those grants that we gave last year would have fallen into one of those big, in one of those big buckets. No, 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 anyway. no, no, hold on. We got to be careful when we say the words big buckets. Because I think the proposals are proposals that fall into the buckets and are big. The, yeah. It's the proposal that's big, not the bucket. Right. Very, the only, if, if we say that a, a big proposal is $50,000 or more, it was only one proposal out of the Yeah, 50. I know, I know, I know, I know. But I mean, so, it's phonetics. It, 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 I think it amounts to the same thing. I, I, I just think if we are serious about tackling some of these bigger needs as we have, have been going down that road right now. Right. I think we'd have to be a little bit more careful about how we spend our money on other things. Okay. And right. Starting off at $100,000 in my opinion, and then put, with the understanding that we're going to chop it down year two and year three, I think is a bad idea. We're that's, wasting that's, too my, much that's my opinion. Okay, I got it. Larry? I, I get John. I get. I think you, you and Patrick have really covered what I was going to say. It's. Uh, I just don't. I don't think, especially in year one, when we don't have big um, uh, proposals from the five groups, 
that I would feel comfortable um, having, let's say, Bail Field come in and ask for uh, you know thirty thousand dollars and saying no to them because we think we're going to have big projects coming up in the next two or three years, so we're not going to give you that money. Um, I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable with that. On, yeah, I understand at, that. I think just a question the, of budgeting myself. I, that that's the way I think I would do it. Marion, I didn't hear, I didn't hear what you said. But it, it, Joe was just saying he 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 thinks it's more important what he had said, or you know he disagrees. He, he I think it's a question of budgeting, Larry, and being you know being careful about how we spend the money. Marion. So I, I think this is a kind of a clarifying point for me. I realized I was getting you know I was sort of mixing a couple of things up, and we talked about these buckets like childcare, like marketing. And, and the clarifying point is that, and I, you tried to emphasize this, but I'm just gonna say it again for, for myself and everybody, which is that just because we have the bucket of childcare and say we say we're gonna take a big proposal, if someone in the community has a $5,000 grant request for childcare, that doesn't fit because what we're saying is we want one big proposal. So, you know- Or two, but, or two, but, but, but what proposal. I'm saying is, is it, the way we're determined, I will, kind of want to clarify, right? The way we're saying we want to determine these working groups are going to develop proposals in these areas. We are not then saying, you know, if, if say we say we, we've, we've allocated 100,000 for childcare, that doesn't mean that that could be split among 10 community grants. That means we want one big grant. Or well, does he, it? Here's, here's, how, here's how I would define big. I would define big actually as impact. Yeah, absolutely. Not cost. Right. And now, uh, since we've we've given out 199 grants, by my count, we've had. It's pretty hard to say that any of them have had a defined impact. Marketing, I think, implicitly has, but it's been very hard for us to measure it. It's getting easier for us to measure it. I don't think any of the others have had an impact. Flower, I'm sorry, flower no, no, sorry, have had a big impact. Have changed, have changed the the course of you know. So I, what I would say is that we want to to, to focus our efforts on generating pr pr big pr proposals that will have a big impact in five areas. If someone came to us with a one thousand dollar proposal that would have a big impact to increase childcare, yeah, of course we would grant it. And so, but but. Really, I guess what I'm saying is that the, the, the I think that we should focus our efforts on creating proposals that will likely have big impact. So I guess, and then the community fund is for proposals that will have small impact. I guess that was the, the clarifying thing because right. I think we're we're kind of mixing things up. I was right. trying to get clarity on what's what's the community fund right. and what's our big big proposals. And we were talking about some of the proposals in the past that would have fallen under these categories. And what you're saying is they. Don't for, or do or that. Well, that's where. Yeah. For example, if the housing group came forward with a pilot test for thir for thirty thousand dollars for an ADU program, I would. I I'm not sure I would approve that in the future. Hmm. I approved it this year because we didn't agree that we're because we were giving grants that were having small impact. Want a proposal from housing that's going to build 25 units of housing, or is going to, you know, is going to show the if they came in and said, "Look, we've got 40 people signed up for ADUs. They're ready to go. If we give them a $10,000 incentive, I'll vote yeah. for that." Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, we, and the hard part about this is not going to be deciding to give the money. And it turns out that the hard part about this isn't getting the money. It's just flowing in. The hard part is coming up with the big proposals. And we have 200 examples of things that aren't that. <laughs> so what do we need to do to force ourselves to yeah, do that? John, John, the, 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 in my mind, we know that we're going to be spending this money at some point. We know that those expenditures uh, lurking down the road. Yeah. So why not be prepared for it as best as we can? That, uh, I think that's my point. I'm trying to get to. I think I think Joe's to to make it really simple. That it's save the money for the big impact things when they arrive, right. or do because you know they will arrive. It's yeah. not an if they will arrive. Okay, but let me finish, Joe. Yeah. 
I'm trying to make it clear so everyone yeah, understands. Yeah, yeah. Or we we use more money for community and and weed it down, knowing that the big proposal is coming. So Joe's saying we'll do better if we save the money now because we know they're coming, right. versus spend spend some of it now. You know that's going to give us less when the big ones come. Is that would that be fair, Joe? That's that's just, that's essentially it. I mean, yep. you know that they're going to be there. Yep. That yep. It isn't. It isn't an if it does come when it does come. We yep. know we're going to need it at some point down the road. So why not be prepared for it? Is what yep. I'm saying. Yeah, Todd. Yeah, Marion. I think to your point, it is confusing because what we're saying is before, like when I started here. You know the procedures and what we were trying to do it wasn't as defined as we would like and we're still working on it right so things like fireworks i'd like to use that one because everyone knows i hate paying for fireworks even though they're beautiful um i would pay for them as a private citizen but no one's ever asked so this is so the town doesn't hate what we're doing and they can get the things that they're used to while we do things that are gonna make the town a better place for everyone, right? So I think defining it, I think what you're struggling with, which, which I'm struggling with, I'm struggling with this. Defining it's difficult because I don't know what cockamamie idea someone's gonna have that probably would have gotten done for the last 10 years. And if we don't do it this year, a lot of people are gonna be super angry and it's cost $2,500 and we should probably just do it, but there needs to be some cap on that, right? So I think like the, the mise-en-scene of this is like murky waters. And I don't know, Joe says one thing like, oh yeah, John, I, it's all, we just need to be doing things that are, have a higher impact, like John said, right? But in knowing that we want to define who we are, what we're doing, have this on the record, have people really have an understanding, we certainly have to have parameters. So um, I'm just saying, Mary, and I'm as confused as you are, but I think it's all in the right direction. All right. <laughs> Let me just, I think there's only one, I, I think Joe is, Joe's approach is, absolutely correct and it's mathematically correct every dollar we don't spend on things that aren't are it aren't big impact uh in the five areas, five areas yeah. is a dollar that won't get spent on it or we'll have to yeah. have to wait there's only one reason for transitioning to that lowest amount whether it's 10 percent or thirty thousand or whatever the number is more slowly and that is i believe i don't agree with only one thing that Joe said, which is we, we know the big proposals are coming. Let's just talk about who the we are. I think that there are fewer than not, there are nine people on the EDC. I think that there are, I know that of the nine on the EDC, there are fewer than nine who believe with certainty that the big proposals are coming. Because yeah, what I, is John? That, that there are fewer than nine people who believe, who are certain that the big proposals are coming. I'm not certain that the big proposals are coming. It's not because we're not going to try, and it's not because we're not on the path towards them, but it's really, really hard. Yeah, can't be half and, and more importantly than that, I, I feel reasonably confident that the only potential people who are sure that the big proposals are coming are the nine of us, that everyone else is less sure than the nine of us. So the reason, so I think we have a, a losing argument to tell someone we know that the big proposals are coming. If I was arguing against it, say, well, how many proposals have you done so far? Well, we've done 199. And how many of over how many years? Eight years, six years. And how many of those have fit your criteria? Well, none. <laughs> one. None or one. It's a <laughs> one. debate. John, you're contradicting yourself. No, uh, what I'm saying is, is that I, I think that because I think what we have to say to people is, we are committed to the big proposals coming. We are organized. We have now organized ourselves. We've heard everyone. We agree. We, we are, are working towards it. We are working towards it. We can now demonstrate that so meeting. So our work is not going to be for not. But you just said a few minutes ago, if I if I remember correctly, if next year or the year after, we should propose giving a contractor a chunk of money and building. A dormitory, for lack of a better expression, I would be in favor of that. Well, I mean, we know that at some point, something like that is going to be coming down the road. And no, my I, position no, we, is, I don't know. That. Why not, as responsible people taking care of the taxpayer dollars, 
be prepared for that. Joe, That's I do. I, I understand. I disagree with you that I know that it's coming down the road. Right. right. We have known. We have known about the need for ten years. Yeah. And we have made absolutely no progress. There's not a single person who's made any progress. We haven't made any progress. The proposals our housing group has put forward, which are fantastic from where we started from, which was nothing, haven't put it forward. We, we, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not, be, I'm not certain. I, yeah. I, well, I, what I'm more certain of is we can't convince everyone else that they should be certain that the proposals are coming. That's the, the only reason. Because they don't know how complicated it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's easier to convince. These are all best, they're best laid plans. I think the, we're the working hard for best laid plans. The less confident well, you get, but I think it's. I, I also think the money that we would spend, if we're talking about, you know, 1.5, let's say if we're talking about $360,000 a year, we're talking about $1.8 million over five years. We're talking about a difference of the 1.8 we're talking about a difference of about a hundred thousand extra that we would give actually a hundred and a hundred and forty thousand dollars extra out of what it's, it's eight percent it's a small difference uh, anyway that's the only the only reason for not doing what you're saying joe is that we you may agree or disagree with well, that reason but there's no i think there's no other reason otherwise you're right well and, and, and to, to john's point for a second uh the big proposals they're hard from a couple of points of view one is you need people who think big and who have the time and the energy right. to dig that, in and find it. You know, I mean, that's the constraint. Right. And I'll use me as an example. I knew from when I got on the EDC that I wanted to deal with the marketing thing because I know that everything they did was small and I was not thinking small. I came in with the idea I'm going to think big and, and which is what I've done. And, and but you need you need that group of people or person who's going to drive that for the big proposals. And, and the question is, how long is it going to take for that to happen? And in the meantime, if we want to tell the community we're not spending our money because I will I've been here nine years. And when they started the one percent tax, there was a couple of years where people were bitching and moaning that what are they doing with the money? They're right. not doing anything with the money. So I, I think the weaning them down a little bit while we while we push for the big programs, yeah. I think that's a better way to go. But and I don't think in the in the long term of it, it's that much money. All right, let, let's. I think the points of view have clarified. You know, are, have, have are clear. Yeah. Right. We all and, we all agree we should do this. We just don't know the range, right? Okay. That's so, right. but let's what, just, what approach? Let's just let's just have. If you had to vote, if you were closer to moving to some end result tonight. I mean, no, moving to some end result in January, whether it's 30,000 or 10%, I think roughly equivalent, or whether you would rather have a three-year transition that was had a meaningful difference between year one and year three. Let's just say 175, 30, or 175, 10%, something like that. Right. Um, which would you vote for? Just without explaining, just which would you be in favor of? Or can you uh, either one or, or you can't decide? I'll just go through here. Mary? I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, so Patrick? Uh, wean them off. I'm wean them off. Uh, Joe? Go to. Well, I think it's obvious. I mean, Larry, Larry, no, I know what. Larry, Larry and Todd just a few minutes ago reported that they have a survey and they had, I don't know how many, 85 respondents. People know that we are doing something that was never done before. Yeah, but oh, no, no, Joe, 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 this is well, the yes anyway, or no part. Right, you, you know you're voting for, yeah, we know you were. Okay, Larry. Oh, I, I like the uh, starting uh, high and, and tapering up. Todd? I, I'd like to taper with a range. Oh, okay. Is that okay? And Mika? Yeah, same. I'd like to taper down. Okay. okay, so I think we've got one, two, three, four, five tapers, a not sure, and a not taper. So I think we're tapering. <laughs> okay, now, um, the, the reason I'm trying to bring, bring this to a head here is because if we want to go ahead in January, we need to we need to start the process up now. Yeah, yeah. Now, if we want to go ahead in February, we could probably have one more month. Uh, how do we... January. January. Yeah, because what happens is once we do these, you know, we lose a month or two and then the programs don't start until, you know, third month. And, and then all of a sudden we're, we're rushing and we're, you know, I think the sooner we can do it and get the money out there, the better. And what about, yeah, okay. 
um, it's five of eight. So I want people to think about, so I'll take some steps with each of you to, to, to kind of restart the process. Should we fundamentally repeat the process from last year? Yes. Anyone have an objection to that? No, I think that's good. I think we're, uh, what I'm doing, by the way, since we have to move quickly, I'm deferring then the debate about this, you know, should the community loan fund be something else? It's, you know, it looks like it's going to be around $100,000. We'll, we won't announce it until we'll announce the amount after the next meeting so we can discuss what the amount is. But we'll get the we'll get ready to announce the day after the EDC meeting um, and so forth. So we'll be prepared for that. Um, uh, I, give some thought to when we consider the big proposals and whether we consider them at once, if we have a deadline for ourselves, like I'm making this up July 1, oh. or, or we do it on a rolling basis, which I think is not a great idea. I, I, but, you know, and I think waiting till January of 2024 is also not a good idea. So give some thought to that because well, I, I guarantee you we will have a market. I know the marketing ones will, but I, is there a, I know that, that, uh, you know, just, Thinking about that for childcare, is there anything timely around? There, there could be at, or, so. Should, does there need to right? Do, are there sort of a sense of urgency on some of these things? I think and imagine. I mean, marketing and housing probably a little. You know, could be, could be my, uh, one month or maybe two months or three months later. I know we need to continue it. Childcare could come up in October. We have a plan or November, and we need to do it immediately. Right. Give the, give that some thought. We don't have to answer that tonight. I think any of these options have pros and cons. I think, by the way, a principle we probably should follow is because it's going to be so hard to get big proposals, we should do everything we can to approve big proposals. <laughs> yes. even, if, even if what that means is the early ones get approved at the expense of the later ones, mm -hmm. because the money will come in again. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the, the faster, the early ones probably get favored, whether that's the right precise priority or not. Possibly, I'm, we don't. I'm not making that. It's not a decision. We'll talk about this at the next meeting. So, okay. So, just to summarize what we discussed here, we're going to go ahead with a community grant process that's significantly smaller than 100,000, uh, and starting in, and we'll have that process in January. We'll launch it on October, the first week in October. Um, Joe and Larry uh, and I are going to work on the loan fund and exploring that with Bradford and the lawyers and so forth. Um, we've approved the ADU thing. Um, we're going to hear what the pickleball thing is. Yep. And, and uh, you know, John, if there if there's a possibility of of getting the loan fund set up for January, that would be an awesome thing. So, uh, you yeah, know, right, so that it was ready when right we, because if we cut, we cut doing it at the same time, you mean, right? Yeah. Because if this way, if we're we're cutting it to 100,000, say, as a number plus a loan fund, plus, plus a loan fund, fund it's yeah. gonna, you know, so we'll solve the problem. Yeah. So, Larry and Joe, let's the three of us try to see, assess, you know, and report back to the group in October whether we think that that's feasible based on a meeting with Bradford soon and and you know. Does that make sense? Sorry. Just let me know, John, on my time. All right. Well, actually, can I, Larry, you've, you have, in fact, been, you have, in fact, been taking the lead on this and pushing me. So if we, since there's no members of the community here to hear this, will you chair this, this team? It's not really a working group because we're just exploring one idea, but will you just sort of chair this uh, group and get Joe and I to coordinate with you and, and so forth? Okay. Um, there is actually, uh, Joe, I'm, uh, Larry, I'm going to suggest that we have the startup Woodstock discussion at the next meeting. Is that, that is that too late? That's too yeah, late. Yeah, I, I just need one, one, I need a quick vote. Yeah, go ahead. We, we, we didn't put this on the agenda, but there's no one else here, so. No, it is on the agenda. Oh, it is on the agenda. Yes, so we can talk. Okay, perfect. Go ahead, Larry. Larry. Okay, uh, briefly, uh, we've had some uh, starts and stops on the startup Woodstock. As you recall, the um, uh, EDC granted us ten thousand uh, dollars towards this project, and we have twenty thousand dollars of uh, private money, uh, and we're hopeful of more. 
what the little bit of a problem became uh, the EDC really isn't it was I put it in as an EDC project, but the EDC really isn't set up to run this uh, competition and uh, is also not set up to go out and really solicit uh, uh, more funds to to fund the competition. So what we just so that it's clear, uh, we would like to have uh, a, a separate um, uh, organization, 501c organization. I've talked to uh, Jill Davies about making it uh, through the Woodstock Community Trust that would then run this whole 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 program. It would be called Startup Woodstock probably or startupwoodstock.org rather than having it as an EDC thing. And, and when I re looked at the application, I thought there was an ambiguity there. So I just like a vote to allow this to be run by a separate organization, presumably called Startup Woodstock. And that organization would include, I think we should put some specific names to it of people. It would... the, 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 the people on it so, so far are John, myself, uh, Cliff Johnson, and um, uh, Stuart Matthews. Amen. So I think we should just say that that's the, that's the group that we're requesting uh, to vote. We also have we have we have oh. uh, I think it's eight okay. judges. We have eight judges um, who would would not be I guess would not be in the in the organization, but we'll be doing. It's not we're in other words, we're not changing the process at all. But what is the the, what's the but motion looking for specifically about? Just to to move to move to this organization? Yeah, just uh, I just wanted to be clear um, because the application was a little ambiguous it's a, it's a, it was an edc application but we, edc isn't really going to run this program yeah. it isn't going to run I, this campaign i think i think just to be technical about this when we when a grantee applies for a grant and we give them the grant we allow the grantee to operate uh, independently and to make all the decisions with one caveat which is that the money that they ask for to be reimbursed from us has to be used for the purpose for which it was granted. And so that's the only uh, obligation we impose on a grantee. What Larry, I think, is asking for is to make this group of four the grantee rather than the EDC being the grantee. They're still subject. We won't give that group of four the $10,000 unless they use it for the precise purpose of the grant. It's, so it's really an administrative. It's who's so what, responsible uh, for that. John, do you know the language that you should? Can you present the motion with the proper language? Okay, well, I would move that the grantee be changed from the EDC to a private group of four citizens, Larry Niles, John Spector, Cliff Johnson, and Stuart Matthews, who will administer the grants funds according to the same requirements that for which the funds were granted. Through right. a nonprofit organization. I would I move. Through a second. All right, so Marion has moved that. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Yeah. Well, Baron, should ask me. Yes, you asked your question. Well, I just, uh, I, I, it just jumped out at me. The obvious thing. It's all that white men. It's all men. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, I know that there's the population of Woodstock, but certainly. So the group of judges. So yeah. the status that we're at is that we have recruited a group of eight or nine judges who are diverse in multiple ways, geographically, gender-wise, and by occupation. Right. That's. Um, however, the the group of judges has we've delayed this project so long that it's not 100 percent certain that that same exact group will agree but i think most will and i think that larry we can commit to making sure that the group is as diverse as the edc was which is the group that would originally be the the granting group is that a reasonable yeah yeah it was just yeah jumped out at me yeah i, I think yeah mechanically yeah it's actually the judges that are going to that are going to be making the decisions. It's it's this group that's setting up the administration. You're, you're okay with I'm, that? I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? All right. The motion has been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Larry, you can keep operating. <laughs> All right. And we have a motion to. Is there any other business? Motion to adjourn. Aye. Second. Second. Pat, uh, Todd got in there first, Marion. Sorry. <laughs> Seconded by Todd. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We are adjourned. Thanks Thank for your time, you. everybody. Have a good night.